Hey guys, Steven Turner here with Turner Fish, and welcome back to the channel. First off, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Depending on if I post the video before New Year's or not, this one should come out before Christmas, so Merry Christmas, guys. So I've been getting a lot of emails and comments talking, you know, can, can you teach me more about how you go about finding a, where the fish is at once you locate your fish on your graph and stuff. So that's what I'm going to go over today. It's pretty much like... If you're a really good, really, really beginner crab fisherman or intermediate crab fisherman, or you struggle at getting a limit or figuring out how to make the fish react, this video is for you. Uh, after I get done talking about the rod and reel setup, I'm going to show a clip. It's about 10 minutes long of me just fishing, but I catch them and I'm showing you exactly my thought process, what goes into it, and how to repeat. The cast that you're doing so let's talk about the setup real quick now beginner setup i want a limber rod like my rod i can double it up almost this is a 410 slab tail rod now what you need to do is go out and get your ultralight rod about six foot long if you're a beginner if you're not you know use your whatever setup you got four pound mr crappy line uh, high vis. I love high vis because I'm able to watch it and as that jig falls you can see the line jump and get you a slab real quick. Alright. Most important part about the way we get our limits and a lot of people struggle. A lot of people go out there with really heavy jig heads and it's just it, it don't work. The, the baits don't look natural. I mean if you're trolling that's fine. But if you're going to be jigging over brush piles, bridge pylons, docks, anything, you want to stay in that strike zone as long as possible. So we make these jig heads right here. Do, do, do. And it has no barb on it for your hook. I mean, for your no bait keeper on it. That way your jigs don't get all messed up. You, you can use them longer. So you're saving money and we use a number six hook on our jig heads that fit every jig in our lineup perfectly. You can get these jig heads 132 and 164 on our website at crappymanjigs.com all one word. Now let's talk colors. Everybody's got a million colors. You know you got orange cricket, you got blue thunder, you got tree green and no. If you're a beginner or intermediate and you just want to catch a limits 365 days of the year that's the only color you need crappy man green it's a color that my dad made and honestly muddy water stained water clear water it's gonna catch them it's gonna catch them as good as any other color out there and 90 percent of the time it's gonna catch them better i don't know what it is about green now i did watch a video where biologist says fish can see green the best that's the best color they can see. So, green and black. So, honestly, like, this color with, like, a black bottom might be pretty good. I might have to check into that. But, the way this is done is just simple, guys. You take a number six hook. You thread it in with the little minnow. And you want to kink it up just a little bit so you can get the hook right out the back and it'll all come up straight to look like that now i've got this tie with an improved clinch knot you could tie it with an improved clinch knot a palomar knot uh, a loop knot's really good i just hate tying them uh, i've got videos on all those knots on the channel you can check them out but like i said guys if you want to catch more fish hit that red button down below and that's going to catch you at least three two pounders this year well, maybe not this year, but next year. But I'm gonna show the clips. I hope y'all enjoy. Hit the thumbs up for the uh, hit the thumbs up for me, and let me show you how I catch a crab. So you got your jig tied up, four pound test, Mr. Crab. You got it on whatever rod you want, a little ultralight rod. Now, first thing you want to do is try to find a brush pile. If you don't have a depth finder you can just go dot to dock until you find the fish or whatever but see i'm pulling up on this brush pile 
I don't know if y'all can see my depth finder, but it shows a fish at six foot and a fish at eight foot. So this is the first cast on this dock. So I'm gonna let out from the end of my tip to there. That was about five foot, so I wanted about seven foot, so I let out a little bit more line. Now what you're gonna do, I, I put my line on my finger so I can feel every little bump. And that 132 ounce jig head or 164, but there's a little current right now, so I got 132. It's gonna slowly bring that jig down into whatever strike zone is out there. You just gotta figure it out. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bump it up and down probably every five to 10 seconds. Now what this does, it gives the jig action. And also, if the fish engulfs it and doesn't bite, when you bump it, you'll feel the pressure and you'll be able to set the hook. But we're just gonna fiddle our way down feeling for any kind of different change of pressure in the line, a thump, or just any barely tick. Now whether or not they're on this dock, I don't know. That's a part of fishing. I mean, last week I caught, caught 20 off this dock, but we'll see. May take me a minute to figure out what depth they're at. But once you figure out what depth they're at, you gotta make the same repeated cast. That's all it is, boys. It feels like a pretty good one. Oh yeah, nice 10 incher. Yeah, they might be a little bit bigger than 10. There we go, that's number 12 for me today. I know I just started this lesson, but caught some earlier. Some guys around couldn't really talk, but it was on a different dock. That was really the first cast here. So now, like I was saying, repeat cast. So I'm doing the same thing. That's about four foot. So I want to be about seven foot right there. I mean, it takes time to learn that. All right, same little deal. We're gonna let it go down. Until it gets to the strike zone and with this current it take it just takes a little bit longer with these small jig heads it's it's more about slowly fishing it than power fishing it you don't want to throw it out there and wind it in as soon as it gets down a little bit you want that jig to soak in that water until that fish bites it So every five to 10 seconds, just gonna give it a little bump. And sometimes you don't even do that, cause I mean, naturally your hand's gonna shake. See, that one didn't even bite. I hope I, I hope y'all could see that. I, when I picked up to bump it, there was pressure. And normally when they're about this big, they don't bite. Well, they do bite, but you can't really feel them. See, now that's a freaking slab. Yes, yeah, sir. It's about a pound and a half right there. Nice fish. So that makes number 13. I mean, guys, this technique can be used 365 days a year. And it will catch fish. So now, what do we do? Same thing we just did. We're gonna flick it under there. That one went about six foot, so I really ain't gotta put that much line out. Now we're just waiting on it to fall down there until the strike zone. Now a lot of people say that we do some crazy crap to catch fish all year. Honestly, it's, it's easy. It's more about the feel than actually fishing it's more about knowing what a bite feels like so you i mean if you're just now starting you're gonna miss a lot of fish that you don't even know that bite see that one thumped it pretty good the other two just picked it up hey these some nice fish over here today uh, he 
felt bigger than he was. But that's a nine incher. Makes number 14. A little chunk. Now that one bit it differently than the other ones did. That one bit it on the fall. And he thought that the other ones just picked it up. So, I mean, as long as you're in that strike zone, pretty much good to go. See if we can get one more. I'll end the video right here. But this is the technique, guys. Very simple very finesse and I mean anybody can do it put your finger right like I do my fingers a little messed up because I've been uh, doing some rock moving and pent a fence putting up but I put my line in between my crease that way I can feel anything that wants to bump it and eventually you'll figure out what's a fish and what's a brush pile like you'll bump it and you'll feel a limb and you won't jerk but when a fish barely bites it like that one did you know it's a fish that's a throwback right there he might be eight inches but we're not gonna keep him today all right so when you got your strike zone in one spot, what happens if, you know, they start biting? You just, oh, you gotta undo your bail. <laughs> and fix your jig. I caught almost two limits on this one jig. So I said I was gonna end the video, but I wanna try this real quick. So that's eight foot right there, give or take. But it's a different, strike zone is what i call it it's a different angle so i'm gonna let it come down at a different angle just to see what happens because normally if you got a school of you know nine to nine to eleven to twelve inches on one part of the brush your bigger fish are going to be outside the brush i mean sometimes i catch you know the two pounders up in the shallowest part of the brush like I, I don't know why but you just do sometimes but same story goes different angle but it's all going to end up in this one little strike zone right here at around eight foot now we're sitting in probably 21 feet of water the brush pile comes up to about 16 foot. Well, not all the way 16 foot, but it'll make the water seem like it's 16 foot. So you got about 12 foot you can play before you start getting hung. So like now I'm give or take around eight foot. I didn't get a bite. You can drop it, always drop it down a little bit, but you want to keep your line tight as you go down. Like just very go down with your rod and bump it as it goes down because playing with live scope you'll see that they'll come up and look at it and if you can bump it you might be able to get that reaction strike but another thing you're not going to catch one every cast It's like this one I'm about to wind it in feels like my jigs messed up a little bit and not really I'm gonna <coughs> I'm gonna hit it with a little shad scent like that now scent wise I'm only doing it because the water's dirty with the water being a little bit dirty I want every advantage I can get all right 
Okay, so jig's going down. We're gonna bump it on the way down. Another thing, like just because you see fish on your depth finder doesn't mean you're gonna catch any. So if you're new to depth finders or new to trying to find stuff, like you can find the mother load of crappy and they just won't bite. There we go. Easy as that guys. Nice little nine incher. Same jig. <laughs> jig been beat up. Another one. So that gives me, I think, 15. But make repeat cast. Like, every time you cast, try to remember what you do. Like, don't remember that but let's say I throw over here all right I know I threw that far so I need to remember I threw that far and I will let that go down and if he bites it on the way down I need to remember that he bit it on the way down now if it gets to where the lines tight and you haven't caught one and you you open your bell and give it a little bit more line remember how much line you give that way you can make repeat casts because when you get a bite that's where they want to bite for the most part now you may be able to catch them a little bit higher and you may be able to catch them a little bit lower depends on if they're coming out the brush or are they stacked on top of the brush so like now i'm probably in about six foot of water with the current because my, the current's pushing my jig this way so every time i bump it the jig is in the current and eventually it'll come all the way down so i'm gonna give it some line and i remember i went this far with the rod when i gave it line which we may not catch one over here today Now I'm just playing around with how long it takes me to bump it. I mean, there, there's no certain science to bump it. I say every five to ten seconds, but sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. It depends on the fish's mood. Now I can make that same cast over here and catch one, but I'm casting outside of the of the school, trying to catch a bigger one. Cause I mean, I only need five more and it's only eight o'clock in the morning. And I got another video to make. <laughs> well, I was hoping I'd catch one over here. But sometimes I catch them. This is normally how I catch the bigger ones. It's fishing off of the school. Which if you're a minnow fisherman, hang your minnow outside of the brush on like the edge of it and then fish your jigs in the brush. Pick some up that way too. Alright, I think it's a no-go over here. So now, go back to what you were doing. I'm taking... Flip it up under there, that one went about six, so I'll give it a little bit, I'll line up, that's eight right there. In my head it's eight, it might not be eight. Well, whatever it is, that's where they're biting. I'm gonna let it go down, we're gonna let this striper fisherman come over here. We'll catch one more. Uh, that's Brad Taylor's Outdoors. <laughs> I 
don't know if they wanted to fish this dock or not. It's probably striper fishing though. That many people, you can't fish this dock. <laughs> Back in action, I'm giving a little bumps. Oh, we had a little bite right there. Wasn't huge though. There's another bite. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright guys. Got five more to go and I need to save them for the next video, but that's pretty much it. Like, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments down below. Be happy to answer. And as always, guys, hit the subscribe button. Share the video with somebody that needs to learn this technique. How to catch a big old slab on Lake Murray. <coughs> and I'll see y'all on the next video I'm about to go make now. Yee! -yee.